welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Now, recently, fellow YouTuber and rock star Kramer from Living Anachronism invited me to a lop. It's in Indiana, and it's called Reckoning, and I'm super excited to be part of it. It's like a really high immersion event where they like pay a lot of attention to the kind of garb you're wearing and how your camp looks and all that, which immediately caused a problem because although I do have a pretty good amount of garb because of all the crap I've made over the years, I did not have a tent. Your boy sleeps in a hammock when I do camp and I didn't want to get like one of the out of game tents because I really wanted to stay as immersed as possible. That being said, a canvas tent that would fit in one of these type of bad boys costs like four to eight hundred dollars ish something i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna spend that much on a tent at least not until i've tried to make my own that's right that's this episode we're making a canvas tent today well we're gonna try to make a canvas tent today we'll see how it goes so without much further ado let's give this thing a try and level up this skill now there are many ways to waterproof canvas for making said tent you can use beeswax or silicone or whatever but I am very much in the camp of go big or go home with this build, and I'm afraid that all of those methods are going to be really expensive and hard to do. So I decided to try my hand at finding some already water resistant fabric. And I found this great deal of a tarp by Harbor Freight Tool. Sure, it's only six foot by eight foot, but it's also only $22, which that's right in my budget there. With that, I was able to get four room and still be around $100. Again, $400 for this tent right here. So the way I see it, we're already laughing. Of course, this means we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to connect all those little pieces of tarp together in order to form a big old tent. So my thought here is to lay out three of the panels. That becomes like the walls of my tent. I'm making this kind of wedge A-frame. And then that fourth tarp is gonna end up being my door flaps. Hopefully, we'll see. So I started by laying out my three panels on the ground and lining up the grommets along the eight foot side. To help hold them aligned, I just use small zip ties through the grommets on either end. Now because this canvas material is it's quite heavy and there's a lot of it, I decided to just do two panels first, that center panel and one of the side panels, just so it'd be easier to kind of maneuver around. Now that you could just kind of put the ends together like so and just do a straight seam, I really wanted it to be as watertight as possible. So I decided to fold those seams together to form this kind of nested C look. And there's a kind of important point to this. Wherever you kind of form that C, there's gonna be like one end of that seam that's, that you're gonna be able to get up into, right? You wanna make sure that's facing down on your tent, so away from the pitch of your roof. Basically, if it was facing the other way, then if it rained, all the water would gather inside of that seam, and you don't want that. You want it to just kind of roll right off. Now, I was having a lot of trouble pinning through all this material, so instead I just sewed in some basic tacks wherever the grommets would be just to help hold everything together. And with that all locked up in the right position, I went back down into my lair to iron those seams out and make everything lay down as flat as possible. Then it was off to my mighty little sewing machine to lock everything in place. And again, this thing is a lot of fabric to move and it was a little bit cumbersome at first. And this is where that sewing machine, which I have a link to how I set it up right here, is worth its weight in gold. It had zero trouble getting through all of this canvas. The only limiting factor was my shoddy abilities, really. Now to make sure this gusset is as strong as I could make it, I sewed in between the grommets and then made a right angle turn, did about six or seven more stitches, and then sewed back down the other way. This resulted in this rectangular gusset here that's super strong. I just went ahead and continued doing this, securing in between the grommets until I was completely finished. Was this quick? No. Was it easy? Actually, it really wasn't bad. You're just sewing some straight lines. It isn't that hard to do. Just kind of cumbersome with the setup I have and so much material, but if you have like a, an automatic machine or whatever that you don't have to crank, this would probably be a really fast project. All right, so with one side of the tent all attached, I brought over the next side doing all of the same steps, folding them together and ironing it into place. And again, remember, you want the opening side of that fold to end up on the downside. So picture wherever the middle of your tent's gonna be and make sure that it's underneath, right? So water doesn't pool up. Now, as a little change here, I decided to actually secure that seam together with some barge cement instead of just tacking it in. 
And I really think this is the way to go. Not only did it hold those seams together better so that the material wasn't moving all around as I sewed it, but it also made it a little bit more rigid so it was easier to feed through the machine. Another thing that helped was drawing the lines that I was gonna sew just so I had a very clear path to follow. Cool, so with all my panels of the main tent connected, it was time to bring it outside for like its maiden voyage as a tent. I started by lying the whole thing down nice and flat on the grass. Now I wanted the inside floor to be eight foot wide at least, so I measured from the very center where the ridge line would kind of end up being, four feet out on either side. Then I moved those corners in to those marks. By doing this, I can be assured that that inside dimension is gonna be at least eight foot wide. Now to make this bad boy stand up, it was off to the woods to find poles long enough. I used the very sophisticated measuring device of reaching my hand up as high as it would go. Once I found the poles that were tall enough, I cut a little V-groove into what would be the top. This is gonna allow me to thread my ridge line through them. And for this tent, I needed one at either end, so I made two of them. Using this is fairly simple, I just kind of positioned it centered at one end of the tent opening and picked it up, wedging the stick against the ground. Then I did the same thing on the opposite side. This wasn't hard to do, though failures did happen. I just needed that floor to be a little bit wider so there was more down pressure on those poles. Once I figured that out, everything stood up pretty easily. Once those were secure, I grabbed some paracord and looped it around a spike that I had driven into the ground about 10 feet away from the front of the tent. Then I ran this cord through the little V-groove in the first pole and out of the little V-groove in the second pole. By attaching this to another spike on the other end and tightening that down, I was able to make that ridge line of my tent nice and tight. I then did the same thing with the waist high grommets on either side of the door, pulling those tight at a 45 degree angle to give me this really nice defined wall. And this is already looking like a tent. I'm very excited. I was very excited by this. It's one of those little things where you're like, that's a tent, I could sleep in that. I did notice, however, that I needed some little grommets or something to pull on the sides here, just in order to make everything a little bit more tight. All right, from here, I needed to decide to what to do about the doors and how to lay that whole thing out. To do this, I just busted out tarp number the fourth and used some clamps to position them all around the tent to form a flap. Just an FYI, if you're questioning it, I'm leaving that triangle at the very top of the tent open for ventilation. This tarp is like airtight and it's gonna get really sweltery and nasty inside of there if I don't have some sort of ventilation. Happy with that layout, I used this white marking pencil to mark out all along the edges where the tent door meets the tent. I also marked right at that top area where to start so when I sew it into place, I knew where to begin. With that marked out, I just laid it on the ground and folded along those marks and then used some pins to hold everything in place. Then I clamped it back to the tent to make sure everything falls exactly where I wanted it. The thought here is to let it drape over more than half of the opening, then cut another one the exact same size so it goes over more than half so the two overlap each other. Then I can make like little tie-offs or something like that to keep it close. All right, so with that all figured out, it was back to the lab to iron in those seams right where I wanted them, and then cut off all that excess material, leaving myself about an inch left for seam allowance. Now here's the thing. Because I was ambitious to say the least about the size of this tent, Obviously one tarp isn't going to make the whole door thing work. So I had to buy three more. Again though, they're $22 a piece. So that just raises the total price like with tax around $170. Again, like four, between four and $800. We're still in the green here. I'm still happy with it. <laughs> that said, if you want to build your own, you don't have to build like a tarp mansion like I did. It could be a reasonable camping height, right? <laughs> Then you could totally get away with doing it, maybe with just three of them, to be honest with you. Anyways, using that first cutout door as a guide, I then cut out the next three exactly the same size. Then I folded over those cut edge and ironed the crease into place. Next, I lined up the top of that panel with the mark I made at the top of the tent and then pinned everything in place using the factory edge as my guide. Then I was back to the old sewing machine to lock everything where it goes. At this point, I also made and installed these little leather panels with a ring on it so I could have a place to pull tight. These are just two little pads, one on either side of the tent, so that the thread isn't pulling directly against the fabric of the tarp. And then with those changes made, it was back to the wilderness to see if it actually works. The setup here was way faster with me being able to get this tent up by myself in around 10 minutes. Those extra rings I added on the sides really helped to find that wall once I pulled everything nice and tight. And those doors overlap perfectly. I can't express 
how jazzed I am with how this came out. I was winging it. I wasn't going off of anything but what I pulled out of my dome piece here. But it is huge, allowing me to lay down lengthwise with a good couple of feet left in front of me. And I was also able to sprawl widthwise super comfortably, mind the belly. Not only that, but I could just I could just walk straight in there without even ducking. Which I'm gonna be honest, that's why this tent is so big. I really wanted to have that high feeling. The wide was good, but I really wanted to feel like you could just kind of stand up and be in the tent. Don't ask me why. I don't know. I just like that. I think it's cool. And this isn't even like its final form. First of all, I don't have the full sides all pinned down, so it's looser than it'll actually be. I just didn't have enough tent spikes made up. Not only that, but I'm just gonna sew on little pieces of rope on that flap in order to make myself able to tie it off. And I might also just add a little nose of fabric just over where that opening is in the door, so if it rains like sideways, it's not getting rain on it. But yeah, those things are super minor, and I am crazy excited to use this thing. That said, there was one last thing I wanted to try out. A bit of a last step slash experiment. You see, whenever you buy like a professionally made canvas tent, they always recommend that you wet it down, you soak it thoroughly before use. This makes the fibers swell and shrink, making it watertight. Now this fabric, this is the tent by the way, it is all here just to side me. So I, I did end up putting in all the little straps and stuff. See, to keep the door flap shut. Anyways, this fabric is already marketed as being uh, waterproof, or at least water resistant. All of the canvas is water resistant. So I also wanted to use this just as a test to see if it's actually, you know, gonna keep rain off of me. So I went at this thing with my hose. I sprayed it in ways that rain just will not hit it, ever. And after giving it a thorough soaking, completely dry inside, which I can't tell you what a relief that is. Mostly because like, sure, this says water resistant or whatever, but if it wasn't and it wasn't in the right kind of state where it would like close up and become waterproof, I would have to waterproof this whole thing. That would suck. That would be super expensive. So yeah, one, Harbor Freight, these things are dope. You did a good job with these. And at $22 a pop, man, you cannot beat that. And for real, if you want to give this type of thing a shot, I'd recommend starting smaller than I did. I'm kind of ridiculous. But this really isn't that hard of a project to do. Now, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, why don't you give me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. Also, because I had to make basically everything for this LARP, uh, be prepared to be seeing a lot of LARP-themed episodes. I mean, honestly, it's the stuff we like doing anyways. It's making armor and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I've been doing... A lot of it. Speaking of which, I gotta go. Reckoning is in less than two weeks, and I still have a boatload of stuff to make. In the meantime, though, keep leveling up, you. I can't, the tent is here. It's all here. Uh, uh, here it is. You've stuck around to the end screen. You're like my hero. That really helps with the whole YouTube algorithm thing. If you'd like to help support us further, Consider joining the ranks of these incredible people. These are my Patreon, and they're the only reason this show can exist. If you'd like to join their noble ranks, consider hitting the link in the description below. Or another way to support us is just by clicking one of these videos here. YouTube thinks that's awesome too.